Hello, 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 everyone. Come on in. All right. Here we go. Welcome to tonight's live session, friends. Come on in. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to a wonderful Q&A session with you tonight. Come on in as you're coming on. Just say hello. Hey there, Facebook. Good luck, uh, Nikki. Thanks for joining me on Facebook, guys. Um, share this with your feed if you're watching on Facebook, if you're joining on Facebook. Welcome, McBean Immigration TV. Welcome, I think, LinkedIn as well. Hey there, Instagram. Good to see you guys. Come on in. Just say hello. Say how you're feeling tonight. Let me know who is on and where you're watching from. It's nice to be with you guys. Hey there, Sophie, Sophia, um, uh, Nana, Gwendolyn. Hey there, Sam. Come on in. Daughter of Zion. Thank you. Some familiar faces are with me tonight. It's such a pleasure to be with you guys tonight. Um, we're going to go through some of your immigration questions. I was with you on Monday night and you guys had a lot of terrific questions that, of course, I couldn't get through, okay? The reality is every single time we meet, I will only be able to get through so many questions. Guys, I'm with McBean Law, a firm that I founded. The firm is located in White Plains, New York, but we work nationwide with clients um, in all 50 states. And we also work with uh, folks who are overseas. If you have a family or family members or employees overseas who you're trying to bring to the United States, we're the ones to work with. Contact us at McBean Law Guys at 888. 462-4006 um, or at mcbeanlaw.com, okay? Or uh, just go on our website and fill out our, our form and request an appointment with us and someone from my team will contact you tomorrow morning to book an appointment with us, okay? Um, come on in, guys. Say where you're watching from. I see that Columbus, Ohio, really nice city. I like Columbus. Columbus, Ohio is in the house. Who else is in the house? Tell me where you're watching from, guys, what, what city and state or country you're, you're in. And friends, if as you're doing that, as you're coming in and letting me know who is on, just um, know also that at McBean Law, we believe in freedom. We believe that you deserve to be free to be your best in the United States. And immigration is one of those things, guys, that gives you that freedom. So type in freedom now because it is urgent. Freedom is something that you can't wait on. You shouldn't have to wait on. I know some people are still waiting for their freedom, but let's just type in freedom now in the comments. Freedom now, if you truly believe that either you, you want that freedom or you want that freedom for your spouse or your uh, um, a, a, a child, someone in your life who is very special to you. You want that freedom. So just type in freedom now, freedom, freedom, freedom now. Awesome. Thank you for doing so. Also, guys, we have a terrific free newsletter that we send out each uh, week. The number one immigration newsletter. Okay. You guys are awesome. You've been reading the newsletters. Thank you so much for reading our newsletters. Subscribe today at mcbeanlaw.com forward slash subscribe. And also lastly, Read our success stories, guys. Read the success stories. Encourage yourself. See what's possible. Learn about what we've de uh, done for many people last year. Go on our website. Read McBean Law um, success stories and just just and share them with other people as well. Freedom now, freedom now, freedom now. Awesome. I'm excited because for the very first time I have LinkedIn here with me. I, I thought. Why not bring LinkedIn in, bring them in, right? So if you're on from LinkedIn, let me know that you're watching from LinkedIn. If anyone is out there on LinkedIn watching, um, welcome to this broadcast. So tonight, guys, let's get into it. Let's see what immigration questions you have for me. Um, and then we'll, uh, so let's just discuss some strategies tonight. Happy to help you with your um, question your or, or the problem that you're facing, okay? Um, someone says, uh, LG, I'm LGBT green card. How can I petition for my partner? So you're, you're a green card holder, right? So green card holders are able to petition for their partner uh, despite the sexual your sexual orientation. Um, the one hurdle that you need to always keep in mind if you're a green card holder trying to petition for a spouse is this. Um, 
that, you know, uh, the spouse who has overstayed in the United States will face some problems getting a green card through you successfully. Uh, it's always a good idea to have um, to apply for that person with with your U.S. citizenship, okay, um, so that they could adjust their status. But you could certainly start the process now for with their uh, for their green card, and um, and yeah, you could start the process. But to finish the process, it's going to require adjustment of status, and that requires U.S. citizenship, okay. I forgot to do this little fancy thing here. If you're watching on. Uh, LinkedIn or uh, YouTube, um, you will see that this is our the latest tips that I'm sharing in this one. Okay, all right. What other questions? What what other questions do you guys have? I see that Ethiopia is in the house, and I learned actually on TikTok uh, today. I'm, I uh, yes, I watched. I'm on TikTok from time to time, and I I learned that Ethiopia is the only country in Africa that was never colonized. Is that true? Um, so thank you for being in the house, uh, the person who is uh, from Ethiopia. Now, um, someone, uh, let's see. By the way, for any questions about case processing times, please um, hold on to those questions and go on USCIS's website or the State Department's Visa Bulletin website for information about um, your case. Now, um, so any questions about how long it's going to take, those questions will not be answered tonight. Um, let's see. Uh, this is going so fast. Hold on one second, guys. Um, freedom now, freedom now. Thank you. Someone says, my wife, my wife applied for the I-130 in May of 2022. Um, when she had a green card, she filed for you uh, when she had a green card. And then she got her citizenship and she sent that copy to USCIS, but I haven't gotten my approval yet. Um, so, so it, so last year, July, so his wife started the process for him with her green card and uh, she's now a US citizen and she has updated the government about her new status. Um, so you're now an immediate relative of a US citizen, which is great. And your case is supposed to go faster um, than that, but just check the process in time, even um, uh, for, with respect to the city, the city and state that you're located in. Um, and if you're having problems here and back from the government with your about your case, um, I would say give it another few more months. But again, it really depends on where you're situated in the country, because even some immediate relative cases can take a little longer um, than maybe a year. But it depends on where you're situated in the case. But you're you're one step closer, though, because of this U.S. citizenship status that your spouse has. OK, um, and they can conf uh, they confirmed. That's good. So. Good, good luck with that. And just let us know in a few months if you're still in that situation. We'd be happy to take a look at uh, that for you. Um, someone says, um, can I get legal status if I'm undocumented and get married to a person with a green card? Do I even get a work permit? So I address the, uh, the issue. Yes, you can get a, you can be filed for by your green card holder spouse. No, you will not be able to get a work permit because you will not be able to apply for adjustment of status um, as an undocumented in the individual in, the, in America married to a green card holder. And that's unfortunate that the government has it set up that way. Now, um, someone says that um, he's 32 or she's 32. She has uh, the person has a pending asylum case. They're asking whether their brother, uh, who is a U.S. citizen, uh, can that person file for you? Uh, uh, this person heard that it takes a long time. So yes, it it does take a long time in that sibling category, or you know, depending on the country you're from, 13 to 15 years of wait. You're here in the United States. That sibling process is not one that I think will um, yield you your green card here. Okay, um, let's see. 
Uh, we, uh, so now let's see. We do not ask for any fees to set up a case. Uh, we don't. We don't have a, a case setup fee. We don't do that at McBean Law. We have a consultation fee, and after you have a consultation with us, we will during the consultation we will quote you a fee to uh, for your case. Most cases, I would say maybe all cases at our firm. Mm -hmm. Um, has we have a payment plan structure, so you pay a deposit and then you'd be put on a payment plan, but there is no fee to set up a case, okay? But if you'd like some clarification about our policies, we'd be happy to speak with you about it. Call the office, ask for our office manager and uh, get your question answered, okay? Thank you for watching from Guyana. Um, someone's, uh, let's see. Um, Okay, let's let's keep going. Um, my aunt, oh gosh, one second. Um, my aunt has a ten-year green card and will be due for naturalization in March. Can she file for her parents on the B two visa now? So she's a green card holder. Um, today and green card holders cannot apply or file for their parents. So once she becomes a U.S. citizen, she'll be able to file for her parents, even if her parents change their mind and they just, and they overstay in the United States, um, they will be an immediate relative and they'll be able to adjust their status through, um, through your aunt. Okay. Uh, let's see what other questions. Um, someone says on Instagram that I have DACA, um, advanced parole. I have been arrested for domestic violence. Um, the case was dismissed. Am I good? Uh, are you, uh, so Jules, you're asking the question, are you good with respect to what process domestic violence, uh, whatever immigration process that you're looking to do in America uh, your criminal record is always something the government cares about. They will always ask you to come in and do biometrics, okay? And they will want to know about your history, uh, your criminal record. Um, but it depends on what case you're seeking. We work with clients who have um, very difficult backgrounds, including criminal record. If you're going through a process or you're about to uh, start a process, contact us so that we can guide you through that, okay? All right. Okay, what other questions do you guys have for me on this side of the room? Um, can my daughter file for me now? She's in the army, US citizen. Yes, yes, uh, if she's a US citizen. Um, can a green card and citizenship be applied for at the same time? So with the green card, you have to become a resident before you become eligible for citizenship. However, for people who have the two-year uh, green card uh, conditional uh, residency status, they are, when they are going through a process to get their 10-year green card, the government does allow them to also apply for citizenship at the same time. Time, so to speak, they would have to file the I-751 petition to remove conditions first. And then um, after that, when they become eligible at that point, at that certain point, they will be able to apply for naturalization at the same time. Okay. Um, someone says too many things on my desk here. Um, let's go back here. This person says I'm in the F2A category, which is the second preference category for um, for uh, green card holders who are petitioning for a spouse or a child under 21 and unmarried. Um, do you have to maintain status until your green card is approved or just until adjustment of status? So the F2A, are you saying that you're here in the United States? Um, if you're here in the United States in that F2A category and, um, and if you're, let's, let, let's do it this way. Um, if you were outside of the United States and you're traveling back and forth to the U S and you're in this F2A category 
and your priority date becomes current and you just so happen to find yourself in America, coincidentally, uh, once your priority date is current and you're still within that I-94 period, that um, that period of uh, lawful stay in the U.S., you can pursue adjustment of status, but your priority date has to be current. You must have a clean record, no unauthorized work or employment in the U.S. Um, otherwise, it will not work and you will not be able to adjust your status. But generally speaking, if you're in F2A and your category is not current, uh, you cannot apply for adjustment of status, okay? So keep that part in mind as well. Okay. Um, awesome on the Ethiopia Rolls Royce. Um, okay, let's see. I've answered that one about asylum. Um, guys, please try not to spam me on McBean Immigration TV, okay? As a courtesy, do not spam. Otherwise, we will um, place you in timeout, okay? Um, someone says... Um, I have, I faced an asylum interview in June, 2022 and have not gotten, um, any update on the decision during these two years. Uh, my spouse was diagnosed with cancer. Can I expedite the case? Uh, yes, you can exp seek to expedite your, the case, um, so that you can get a decision. The asylum offices nowadays are working incredibly slow across the country for the most part. So reach out to us. We'd be happy to work with you on that and to help you. I'm sorry to hear about your spouse. Um, uh, we could assist you with that. Uh, someone is asking, can I file for my son, uh, with a green card if he is 16 and has overstayed his, uh, visa? You, you can file for um, your son. Okay, so you're so this is a green card holder parent who wants to file for a 16 year old child in the United States visa overstay. That child will have to go back home to finish the process at a US embassy, okay? Because the child did not continuously maintain a lawful status in the United States. That's one of the issues that the that you would face in this particular case. Um, someone is asking a question about removal. Uh, we also do removal work at McBean Law Motions to um, uh, reopen uh, and terminate old removal cases, um, cancellation of removal, asylum, adjustment of status, um, and some other things that we do in immigration court for clients. This question is, I'm undocumented. I entered in 2017. And I married. I married. To, I married a U.S. citizen in 2018. My I-130 is approved, um, but my I-485 is denied. Now I'm trying again. I just did a motion to reopen, and what that? What next? That's it. That's where it ends for you, right there, right? You did a motion to reopen. And is there anything more that you're sharing here, Tellison? Um, let me scroll down to see if I see it, the continuation here. But okay, so I don't see the continuation. Um, but in any event, so here's the classic case, and we work on cases like this often, and we have a lot of testimonials, including I think one we shared maybe last week or the week before. A lot of testimonials on motion to reopen, um, and we just had one approved in Manhattan, I think last week, um, and then one today. I don't remember the jurisdiction. I think somewhere out in California, we've been waiting a long time, but it was approved. Every case is different, of course. Um, not all motion to reopen um, and terminate is approved, okay? So now this person cannot get a green card through USCIS until the removal case has been reopened and terminated. It's just a weird technicality in our law. All right. It's not easy to reopen these old cases, these old removal order cases. Um, if you're having, you, well, you have your case pending, you just have to wait. Every, every DHS field office has a different timetable as far as how long they take to adjudicate or make a decision, I should say, on these motions to reopen. Like, for instance, Miami, they, their policy is 60 to 90 days. They're the best that we've seen in the country. New York, Manhattan says it takes them nine to 12 months, and they mean that, okay? Um, other places, California, forget it, long time, year. 
uh, some of those cities in California. So it really depends. But if you have a case like that where you're stuck, you have an I-130 approved, but your 485 adjustment of status application has been denied, we'd be happy to have that conversation with you to help you with that case. Um, someone is asking from um, McBean Immigration TV, can my daughter include me in her filing process um, from her U.S. citizen army husband. So when a U.S. citizen is petitioning for a spouse or a child or a sibling, so um, let me back up. When a U.S. citizen is petitioning for a spouse or a child, someone who is unmarried and under 21, um, the U.S. citizen isn't allowed to to add anyone else to that case, only one I-130, which applies to only one person, can be filed each time. So when your your son-in-law is filing for your daughter as her, the spouse during the spousal process, you cannot be added mom to the case. You will have to wait until your daughter becomes a U.S. citizen for her to then file for you, okay? Um, someone, let's see. Thank you for that question. You guys are having asking some great questions tonight. Great questions tonight. My tea is getting cold. Um, okay. All right. Um, I don't know. In, okay, let's. I'm not speaking about any particular legislation tonight. I haven't done any bill tracking in a while. Okay. Visa bulletin, do I have any idea when it will move? No, I do not. I do not make visa bulletin predictions. Thank you for that question, though. Um, we file, Sarah is uh, asking or saying that we file for adjustment of status. Um, we file for adjustment of status for permanent resident status through spouse in December 2021. In May 2023, I was asked for medical. It was submitted, but no response yet. It's been like two years already since the filing. Uh, Sarah, so, um, you know, okay, so they asked for the medical. Generally speaking, when they ask for the medical, and that's the only thing that is um, that they send you a letter about, that's always a good signal that you're at the end and that they want to... Um, uh, prove your case, not unless something comes up in the file and they're just checking some things out. Don't worry too much about it. It could also just be a, a jurisdiction issue, caseload issue where your case is pending. Um, someone on Instagram is asking a question about public charge. Can it affect your I-485 application? Yes. Um, so the, with public charge, guys, the the, the newer version of the I-485, and this is not something I actually ever covered in any video um, uh, as of late, um, public charge. I haven't touched that issue in, since I was obsessed with it a few years ago during the Trump administration. But yeah, there are some new qu public charge questions on the I-485. You've got to, they will, um, the government wants to know some things about you, your financial strength and everything like that. And so uh, they're not asking you to submit evidence related to those questions. But for some people, they do go that far. It depends on what, on how you answer those questions. If you have any concerns about public charge, being a public charge, definitely reach out to us, okay? so that we can um, so that we can work with you on that. Uh, Instagram is also asking, can a U.S. citizen child, um, can a U.S. citizen over 21 file for her stepfather? Uh, yes, that child, that she can do that. The child, and I'm just saying she, but uh, yeah, I see her. So she can do that so long as it's a true relationship. Um, well, Hold on a second. Yeah, it has to be a true step parent stepchild relationship. The government will consider how old she was when the marriage took place between the, the parents. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm a green card holder. Can I file for my daughter on Instagram? Yes, you can. Green card holders can file for a child. 
and they could also file for an adult son or daughter, so long as that adult son or daughter is not married, okay? Someone says, I want your number to call you. The number is 888-462-4006 on Instagram, where the go to my bio, you will see it there on Facebook. It's also in the bio. Guys, again, you know, get on our newsletter list because if 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 anyone, if, if any of our pages disappear tomorrow, I want you to still be able to find us. I want you to still be in the loop. I want you to still know what's going on and the, for us to, sh for us to share good information with you. So subscribe again to McBean Law's web um, uh, newsletter, subscribe at mcbeanlaw.com forward slash subscribe so that you could continue to stay in the loop. And of course you could find me on uh, everywhere except WhatsApp and Telegram, and those are the ones that I don't really know about. We're only on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, TikTok, and Instagram. That's it. We're not in DMs, so be careful. But know that you could find us in other forums as well, okay? Um, someone says, can my wife file for um, my 10-year-old daughter? Can your wife, your wife, uh, what's your, yeah, your wife could um, file for her stepdaughter. Yes. The answer is yes on that one. Okay. Someone says, I want to go back to the U.S. with my real family. I'm not sure what you mean by that, DJ. Uh, uh, if there's a question, uh, be sure to drop the question in the comment. Okay. Um. Johnny says, I'm, a, I'm in the U.S. about 25 years now. I have three ch children. I have TPS. What can I do? So, Johnny, we've been helping a lot of folks with TPS, uh, particularly Haitian nationals who um, have TPS, and they've been here for 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, well, not 10, longer than that. They've been here for many years and they have these old removal orders because of their entry, how they entered. Johnny, the first thing that we would want to know for about you is how did you how did you get to America? How did you come in? What happened in those early times um, when you were here? Uh, did you ever apply for asylum? Were you in removal? Um, you know, did you ever misrepresent along the way? Did you try to get a green card? What happened? We want to know the journey. We'll study your journey and um, see whether it's possible for any of your children um, to file for you if they are at least 21 years old and are U.S. citizens. Sounds like you do have your U.S. citizen children. So their age matters, your entry, how you entered matters, what, your immigration record matters. We'd be love, we, we, <laughs> we'd be love, we'd be love, right? We would love, we would love to talk with you. All right. We would love to talk with you. Someone says um, on Instagram, and I'm going to circle back here momentarily. If at, at any point, guys, I lose the audio, let me know. Type it in that there's no audio. It's only because I have these fancy things draining my batteries <laughs> on these devices. So let me know. I'm a U.S. citizen. I got married with my wife last January. Jan oh, January 24th, 2024. Congratulations. She entered using a tourist visa and it's already expired. Okay. Her visa is expired. Can we file together the I-130, the I-45 and the I-765 um, together? So your U.S. citizen, your wife, um, uh, she entered it. Well, her visa expired in February, just, uh, you know, last week, I think. And so I'm assuming that she's been here for, I guess, at least six months now. Um, you're now married. You're outside of that um, that 90 day window that the government would really be concerned about for people who come to the United States and then try to adjust their status through a spouse. You're out of that period. So it, it, you guys, you're free to uh, do adjustment of status concurrently, filing everything together. Uh, if you need help with that, reach out to us. Many people can do these marriage cases or any case on their own, but, um, and there is a high approval rate. If you look at any statistic that USCIS ever shares, okay, lawyers don't like to talk about that, but there is a very high approval rate. Most cases are approved. 
Now, when it comes on to marriage cases, however, things get tricky. Um, some Many couples can do it on their own successfully, but others cannot. Even those with a genuine marriage, it gets really ugly for some people and hurtful and long and drawn out. Reach out to us um, to avoid those hurdles. We'd be happy to work with you on that case. Um, so can a U.S. citizen file for a parent if the parent um, is in the U.S.? Yes. I love being, yes. Um, all right, let's see what, let's see. Let's just take the amplifier. Um, shift this over just a little bit. Okay, so what are you guys saying on Facebook? Um, someone is uh, asking, can a US citizen file for her parent the parent entered the country without inspection and has an underlying illness. So a U.S. citizen wants to file for a parent who entered the country without inspection. So the entry without inspection is the problem. Yes, the U.S. citizen can start the process with that I-130, but there is this uh, immigration, um, this entry problem that's on the record, and the government will not allow your pa your parent to adjust the stat her status here so the parent will you know require a waiver i don't know if the parent's going to be eligible for it because in order to be eligible for this waiver um uh the parent will need um an, a parent right and a parent or a spouse us citizen or green card holder and then they'll have to go overseas and finish the process at a us embassy the fact that there's an illness unfortunately the government isn't going to consider that when when it's looking at adjustment of status there is no humanitarian pathway to a green card directly based on health reason um thank you for that question okay See. If any clients are on, just um, just say hello and give me some hearts. Um, let's see what other questions do you guys have over here on TikTok. Um, uh, someone says, I want to do my interview and I got a 221G because the DS-260 had errors. Does it mean I won't get a visa? So 221G is administrative processing and that occurs at the US embassy level, friends, when the government, um, after an interview, they the embassy or the consulate um, wants more information from you um, or they wanna conduct further background checks or, um, something like that is going on. So they kind of pause your case, put it on hold for a while until the problem is resolved. And in this person's case, Karina's case, Karina says that her visa, uh, the visa application had errors on it. I don't know what kind of errors are on the visa application, Karina. Are they substantive errors, errors that have like inconsistent or co contradictory information. Maybe if the DS-260 is saying something differently from the I-130 um, petition, or maybe you said something different at the interview versus what's on your visa application. I don't know what kind of error, and I'm using this, right? What's the error? Very important that we know what that is because that will we'll be able to, at that point, tell you um, what the strength of the case is and whether you're likely to get your visa or not. Um, it sounds like, well, what did they tell you as well, right? When you, what, what was the exit like? Um, what was the, what is it that they're asking for you at this point? Because sometimes things can just be fixed easily and then you'll go back in and get your, your visa. And then next thing you know, you'll, you'll be here. Okay. But reach out to us if you have any further problems or you want to talk about what the error is. Um, someone is asking, can I, can I cancel the I-130? Can I cancel the I-130 and apply for a visa? So this is a person who, who has already put on the record their intent to immigrate here permanently. And now the intention is changed. Now the, the I-130, the petitioner can withdraw that process if the petitioner ever chooses to do that because it's their petition. Um, now you're saying, well, you want to apply for a visa. 
applying for a visa, um, you know, you'll have to prove your intent connected to the purpose of that visa. And you'll have to prove strong ties to your home country and that you're not intending to come and overstay in the United States. A little difficult to prove, not impossible at all, but a little difficult to prove when you have had already shown an intent to stay here permanently. But let's talk about that, what's going on in your life, why you would want to have the I-130 be canceled. Is it a breakdown in the relationship? Sometimes, you know, if it's a spousal relationship and things don't work out as well as you'd like, and or the, the spouse is threatening to withdraw her petition or his petition, then you may think, begin to think, how else can I come to America, <laughs> right? Can I just get another visa? Can I do it on my own? Forget about this process with the I-130. I don't know what the case is, the situation is, but let's talk about it so that we could, I could properly guide you one-on-one, -on -one, okay? But it is possible for the petitioner to um, withdraw the I-130. Um, someone um, says, can I, I, if I married a US citizen and he died within a year of the marriage, can I get my stay? Yes, and we do this kind of case. It's a humanitarian case for widows and widowers. It's an I-360 petition process, and it's usually a very fast process to get a green card um, here in America through adjustment of status. Um, you know, so reach out to us. We would be happy to work with you on uh, on that case. Um, Okay, let's see. So for anyone who has any concerns about privacy, don't start a question if you can't finish it here, okay? So have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us so that we can um, go deeper if you have any questions about the question that you're you're thinking about asking here tonight, all right? Um, let's see. Uh, can an I-130A um, get denied if it wasn't signed? We did it online and submitted it without our signature. Now, Daisy, I have never actually seen that um, that lead to a denial um, of the case, the I-130A. Um, it's possible, but I've never seen that happen. If anyone has had that happen, that filing error, let me know if the US, government, US CIS had ever sent you a denial for not signing the I-130A. For every form that you submit to the government, of course, you're supposed to sign every form that goes in. But I can't say that I've ever seen um, a denial based on uh, lack of signature on that particular form. Um, someone is asking about doing a video a video on the U visa. Okay, thank you. I'll consider doing that for you. Um, let's see. Someone says, I'm in Jamaica, I'm over 21 and I'm unmarried. Um, my I-130, can it be, ex uh, Janelle is asking, can it be expedited? Um, well, so uh, you're over 21 and you're, I don't know, you're in the F1 category. Typically um, the visa needs to be available, okay? What's going on with your priority date? Is your priority date current? If it is current, then we can look into the expedite, but you'll have to have really good reasons or grounds to expedite the case. So reach out to us for us to explore more, only if your priority date is current, okay? Um, a lot of questions about uh, US citizen filing for children tonight. Let's see. Um, I don't, you know, Jeff keeps asking the Jeff, your question about uh, if you're at immigrant individual hearing, if you're at the individual here and they say your your file is archived, um, what's next? I'm not sure about this archive that I don't know about. Um, that's not something I've ever heard of, um, directly. 
pertaining to any of our cases. So I'm not sure what they could possibly mean by that. Normally, when you're at an individual hearing, um, usually a, the judge makes a decision. There's some sort of decision that is reached and an order is issued uh, at the hearing. It, your case can be um, uh, your case can even be administratively closed for a period for until you know you have um, you need to reopen recalendar your case or the case can be terminated or a removal order can be issued. Um, I'm not sure about the archive. That's something I'll have to ask one of my colleagues who handles all of our removal cases. Um, NIW national interest waiver. So then we do that type of case. We have our case testimonies on that. Um, go on, just Google or go on USCIS's website. I'm not going to get into the requirements for the national interest waiver, the EB2, but you have to have some real accomplishments. Um, this is the pathway to self-petition for a green card. Um, but uh, there's some criteria that you'll need to meet. Not all of them you'll need to meet. Some of them you'll need to meet, but you have to have a very good, um, a very good a record of professional accomplishments and time in your field and show that your endeavor, it's in our national interest and the government will allow you to self-petition, meaning that you will not have to have a sponsor, an employer sponsor you. But if you're here in the United States in an overstay process, uh, visa status right now, not status, but you're, you, you just don't have any status here in the United States. Uh, well, with the NIW, it won't, the process cannot work unless you go back home and be interviewed at an embassy. But be careful with that because you're going to need a waiver before you leave the United States. You see these re recurrent themes, guys? The overstay triggers the need for a waiver and then going back overseas for many people. That's the, the loophole, so to speak, that Congress um, set in place, okay? Um, someone says, can my citizen brother sponsor me for a green card? Um, I'm in the U.S. already with a non-immigrant visa. A U.S. citizen spouse can start that process. Uh, I'm sorry, brother can start the process for you with an I-130 filing. But if you continue to stay here and you overstay rather than go back home and wait many years, that's going to be needed in that category. Then the process is not going to be successful here for you. Um, let's see. We do asylum cases. Uh, it's really windy outside. You guys can hear the wind. Let me know. Naturalization is very fast this year. Someone's asking about that. Now is the time for naturalization. The government is highly motivated to have new citizens in November to be able to vote for Joe Biden. Now is the time to really go forward with naturalization. If you have, if you're eligible for it, please do not sit on it. Do, do, do it uh, unless you have a criminal record or some other tax or tax concerns or other concerns. Definitely speak with us about your concerns. But yes, uh, citizenship is, is much faster this year during the presidential year. Um, let's see. Wow, it is so windy out there. Let's see. What other questions do you guys have before we go? Um, more sibling questions. Let's see. Sorry about that. TikTok. Um, uh, what's your consultation fee and where's your office located? The consultation fee for us starts at 250, 300 for me. And the office is located in White Plains, New York. And we do in-person appointments as well. Um, thank you for that. Um, someone's watching from Belize. Okay, let's see what else I could get through real quickly. Um, someone is asking about expediting the children's case with the NVC. So uh, it's, you know, it's possible to submit. The, so with the NVC, it's a matter of submitting a request to them, but you need to have some good grounds to get the case expedited. Um, let's see. 
can a U.S. citizen mother file for her son who came across the border? So when you say came across the border, I'm assuming that's a legal entry. Okay. Um, it depends on, well, she can file for him. Okay. Yes. The answer is yes. She can, she can start that process and I 130 process. But when you say that the son crossed the border is the son uh, in removal proceedings right now. And if so, where are they in the, where is he in the proceeding has uh, a, a removal order already been issued for this person? Um, you know, so getting the green card here through the U S citizen mom, is not something that typically can happen with someone who crossed the border. One thing that I want you guys to understand is that it may appear like these people are skipping the line. And I see your frustrations and I hear these comments all the time on all forums that it's not fair. It's not fair. It's people are coming in, skipping the line. Many of these individuals will never, ever get a green card. So this is just creating a bigger pool of people who will be undocumented in the United States for a, a significantly long time because the system penalizes them for en en entering that way. They will not be eligible for adjustment of status, not unless they get a green card through a humanitarian process. Getting the green card through a parent like this is not one that is available to someone who just crosses the border. And if that person was married to a U.S. citizen, it's the same situation. They would have to, um, they won't be able to adjust the status. They will have to go back home, okay, for to finish the process. Uh, and if they had multiple unlawful entries, then that's a bigger problem. They would then be permanently barred. Perma, perma bar will apply to them. Um, okay, let's see. Um, someone is asking a question about moral turpitude crimes. Uh, contact us to have a discussion about that, please. Um, and let's see. Hello, hello. Let's see if I could take another one before we go tonight. Um, okay. Uh, if you get a 10 year green card, um, do you still have to wait two years before filing for citizenship? So it sounds like you got your green card. Um, is it through marriage? So you were married to your spouse for more than two years. If that's the case, I'm jumping the gun here. But if you were married to your spouse for more than two years at the time that they approved your green card, you got a 10 year green card. Okay. And in which case, um, you could apply for citizenship, uh, when you, um, when you, after being a resident for 2.9 years. Okay. And you had to have been married for three years, which you will be by the time that you're eligible to apply for citizenship. All right, guys, I hope that was clear. Um, <laughs> Thanks so much for your questions. It was really a pleasure to um, be with you tonight. Uh, guys, again, contact us at McBean Law. Reach out to us at 888-462-4006 or at mcbeanlaw.com where you could put in a request tonight for a meeting with an attorney. We're here for you. Uh, we believe that you have the right to be free now, not free later, but free now and to, to just be your best right here in the U.S. where you choose to be. Guys, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for being with me in this one. Uh, check out the videos on McBean Immigration TV. Lots of resources. Over 600 videos are there. Great playlist. There's a lot of content there to learn from. Thanks so much. And um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.